Hello, my name's Michael Keneally, and this video is all about how do you work with the February 2024 new moon, the energies of revolution within the maelstrom, and the overriding need for love bearing. So the new moon of the 9th of February is 26 Vedic Virgo. The Sun too is at 26 Vedic Virgo. And both Sun and Moon are within Danishta Nakshatra, which is ruled by Mars and whose power animal is the Lioness. Um, now you can see the charts and the planet positions on the February page of my Star Wheel Astrology website. It's under the More drop-down. And to get a reading from me, you can go to the starwheelastrology.com website. So, how do you best work with the energies of this new moon? In fact, should I say, with the exceptional energies of this new moon? So the Vedic Capricorn sign placement gives a background of being pragmatic and diligent, hard-working and slowing things down to meet karmic demands and imperatives. But that's not at all the context energies. This new moon is in a revolutionary square to Uranus at 24 Aries in Bharani Nakshatra, whose power animal is the bull elephant. So the call from that is revolution. And Bharani is ruled by Venus. What an effect on Venus. But it's not just um, the, the full moon square to Uranus. Uranus is square Jupiter. I'm so sorry, Uranus is conjunct Jupiter at 14 Aries, also in Bharani Nakshatra, where Jupiter is either making the Bharani power animal insufferable or bringing its spiritual expansiveness and light to it, depending on how the person handles it. And if that was not enough, Pluto is square Jupiter, with Pluto at 6 Capricorn. And this is the Pluto of the Pluto return of the United States, which will be exact on the 22nd of February 2024, in the exact same position as it was on the 4th of July 1776, when the Americans threw off the restrictive tyranny of the British um, nobles and hierarchy. And the Pluto return is causing upheaval and restructuring, also damaging conflicts and declining mental health. So we have to strongly stand and be centred and purposeful and revolutionary in the middle of all that. Interestingly, Mars is in Capricorn, which is its exaltation sign of energy, decision, stamina and power. Could you do with some of that? I certainly could. And Mars is sending a fourth house aspect to Aries where Jupiter and Uranus are transiting now. Mars is empowering Jupiter and Uranus even further. So check out the house or life area that is Aries in your chart. And of course, check out the house or life area that is Capricorn in your chart where there's such a maelstrom of planets around the new moon. Now Jupiter 
and uh, Uranus are about to move into Taurus. So also check out what house or life area in your chart is Taurus. Um, there's an explanation of houses and life areas on my Star Wheel Astrology drop down. Um, in fact, Jupiter leaves Aries and enters Taurus on May the 1st. And Uranus leaves Aries and enters Taurus on June the 1st. So with Jupiter and Uranus moving from Aries to Taurus, it's a revolutionary energy shift from fire, the fire of Aries, to Earth, the Taurus Earth fixed sign quality. And we should feel that shift quite strongly and work with it. Now, in fact, Jupiter is heading into conjunct with Uranus on the 20th of April at 27 Aries. Jupiter conjunct Uranus. Where is that in your birth chart? As I said, get a reading from me about all this and what you can do with it. So there's an utter train crash, planet pile-up in Vedic Capricorn for each of us to cope with, with successive planetary conjunctions in Capricorn. At the time of this new moon, it's all just starting. So the sun and moon at 26 Capricorn in Danishta Nakshatra, there's Mars and Pluto earthquake energy with Mars at 3 Capricorn, Pluto at 6 Capricorn, both in Uttarashada Nakshatra. And there's Mercury in the middle of it all at 13 Capricorn in Shravana Nakshatra. The planets really are telling us to embrace our needed, personally correct revolution. And so we mustn't go under within the maelstrom energies now. And also we mustn't use the maelstrom energies and what we feel about them to override and bully others and argue with others. I just don't know how Mercury will cope as it moves from naught Capricorn to 19 Aquarius in February 2024, fighting its way through the other planets. So there's a huge importance for us to be aware of this. And for us, when we speak to others, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> to find the right words to be the bearer of love. Talk that way amid your needed empowerment and revolution. As you stand strong amid the chaos battlefield of the shifting Capricorn conjunctions, which will be followed by the meeting with Saturn, which is transiting now from 13 to 15 Aquarius. Of course, you absolutely need to include total big awareness of the outer planets, Uranus, Neptune and Pluto, and Chiron as well, if you're to have any chance of mapping this landscape with truth. A new human consciousness exists, coming into being as these outer planets and then the asteroids were discovered and entered human consciousness, adding them to the utter wonders of the declaration and insights of Vedic astrology with its vast spiritual wisdom. Be aware too of what the nodes of the moon are gifting you at this time. Ketu is transiting Vedic Virgo, calling you to become ever more aware of your health and healing issues. And indeed, quite a call often to connect to your past life and ancestral issues. Rahu, North Node, is transiting Vedic Pisces now, 
calling you to develop your intuitive approach to your needed healing and empowerment now. But be aware, there's also the Rahu Chiron conjunction now, with Rahu at 24 Vedic Pisces and Chiron at 22 Vedic Pisces. And Neptune is transiting Pisces too at 1 Pisces 51. With Neptune in a strong aspect to the wonderful sacred fire of Vesta. So really look into what this Pisces energy means for you now. Check out, of course, what house or life area is Pisces in your chart, in your life. Now focusing on to Chiron, because Rahu in Pisces is conjunct Chiron, well Chiron is the bridge from our Saturn identity to our Uranus identity. And so we need to heal to be able to embody the proper manifestation of the current revolution energies. Chiron is the wounded healer, the very essence of the shamanic journey. And of course it amounts to needed integration of our primal self, which we so need to be in contact with and embody, and our divine self, which we need to be so in contact with and embody. So Chiron connects us to our essence and the different dimensions of our essence. So my summary is that there's a background of rebel revolution energies and empowerment calls amid the current maelstrom of planetary shifts. <coughs> now absolutely check out which Vedic predictive period you're in now which Dasha period you're in now. Because that will give you the context of what you're about at this time to have to integrate difficult, potentially empowering, erratic rebel energies. Know please that the Dasha period you're in will explain such a lot about how you're feeling how you're handling all this, how you're walking through the maelstrom and what your true destination you should be walking towards is. Uh, I'm actually in Jupiter K2 Dasher now and so there's such unique new experiences and challenges pushing me to yet further spiritual exploration and yet better introspection and self-awareness and certainly much vaster and fuller awareness of my past life and ancestral issues that govern me in this life and provide opportunities for my spiritual growth. That's why I incarnated and that's true of all of us. So where are you in terms of the Dasha period unfoldment? Also, I want to say that it's the time of Imbolc now. We've just had our Imbolc festival celebration. And it's just so wonderful to see new shoots arising from the earth and catkins on the trees and lambs being born. It so helped me to ground at the time of our local in bulk ceremony here. And I would say to you that being grounded is super important um, at the time of this maelstrom. Where are you at? I'd like to close with a mention of vision work that I would recommend we each do in the context of these particular planetary energies. A. I'd say we'll each have to work hard to focus on and maintain our confidence on a day-to-day -day basis. 
be? I'd say we'll each ha have to stand up and in a sense fight for our rightful identity and our rightful ambitions and our rightful role in our family and our work now. C. I absolutely say that this is a needed time of wonderful opportunity to do vision work now. To see yourself standing in your rightful power and what you look like doing that. To come more into your rightful power, especially in the context of Mars conjunct Pluto and Pluto square Jupiter now. <coughs> I also say this is a needed time for each of us to define our needed revolution now. If we're to become the fullness of us at this point in our life. What is the nature of the road to revolution that we are walking now? And what additional dimensions of revolution should we walk with on that road? What is the actual revolution each of us carries now? What additional dimensions do you need to bring in now in your life, in your sense of identity? This is such a wonderful new moon time and start time to make empowerment and revolution intentions now. At the time of the new moon, and of course throughout the lunation period that it starts. Please don't let any of us waste this wonderful present gift of power and revolution. And don't let us waste it on just being bossy or argumentative. And Borani Nakshatra is so at risk of this now with Jupiter and Uranus uh, in it and the square from and the fourth aspect from Mars. So each of us will need to avoid arguments and wallowing in tension or bossy over assertion. That's the negative side of this. And regarding Mercury, which passages through an utter maelstrom. Make sure you're speaking your Mercury truth. Indeed, with your Mars expression now. I do a, a vision journey at least once a week. And the present time is actually a very, well, such a needed time to do vision journeys. To take stock on at least a weekly basis to state intentions in divine context, to empower yourself now, to connect to the greater picture in which each one of us stands, to bring in our best way of healing now. So to get a reading from me, go to my Star Wheel Astrology website, I've also got a worldwide dating site for those on a spiritual pathway. That's Love Star Dating with its panel of healers and astrologers. Do subscribe to my Star Wheel Astrology blog and see the wonderful healings offered worldwide by my wife Maggie Pashley on her website www.maggiepashley.com So... I hope this analysis and summary will bring needed insight and direction and needed action and vision work and success to you. Thank you.